good day you too well should be obvious what I'm about to take on here cab corners and rockers there's a new replacement with cheapy rocker under there um, cab corners when you first looked at this there was paint down to about here so it didn't look like as big a job it never does of course so it almost, it's deceiving and almost thinking, oh, maybe I don't got to pull the box to work in the cab corner. If you see any bubbled rust on the paint in this area, second I started tapping that, it just, it was nothing. It was just literally paint and rust. There was no steel left. So with my hands, I push that, and as you can see, that's what it's like. Okay, so do yourself a favor. Eight bolts, pull the box, a couple of hefty lads or an engine lift or tractor, whatever. Yank the box, set it on the grass somewhere and do your job. You'll thank yourself later. So here's my replacement cab corner. All right, and it's a pretty big unit. I mean, that's a heck of a lot more than I need. All right, that goes way up into that area. Well, it might make sense to think all oh, new steel, let's just replace it all. But in my mind, cutting into what is good steel doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Because if you're going to keep the truck for a while, a few years down the road, it's going to rust a little more usually. When these patches fall out, it's not the patch that rots, it's the steel that holds the patch. So if I was to cut all the way to the top, and seven years down the road, I still have the truck, maybe, because I do that. This is where my rust line will be, and when I get into it, I'll have about a one inch gap, or more, depending on how rotted it got. And the new patch panel is gonna do me no good, and I gotta make a new piece. So if you cut your patch panel to where your rust is, the good steel, weld it in there, you got all kinds of future repair options. Now I'm not saying you have to do that, but that's the way I do it. So I'm gonna chop my panel, my new patch, above the obvious rust to where I ground down and can see that there's no rust. I can see the paint, there's no rust bubbles, so I know there's no rust in behind. On these GMs, there's a flat piece right here that seals off this part with this part. It's almost like they knew it was gonna rot. Anyway, that's where I'm gonna put my patch. So I've got about, oh, half an inch below it. So what I'm going to do here, is I've already lined it up, estimated and drew a line across. So I'm going to chop that off and then get, get to taking off the old stuff. You've got to pull off this area here, your spot welds on the inside. What I do is I just drill them out and then use a chisel and pop them loose. Once you drill the center, they usually come off pretty easy. Uh, so I'm going to work at cutting away the bad stuff. Same thing goes here. There's an overlap that's sealed with caulking along this seam. And I just ground off it so I can see where my spot welds are. And down here, there really isn't much left. Even the, the underside is Swiss cheesed. So we're going to have to deal with that somehow. But I do have my corner, so I'm going to try to clean it up as best I can and use that if I can. never worked with sheet metal before be very careful those cut edges are like razor blades you think a paper cuts bad nothing compared to that don't really worry about bending it or anything like that at this point trust me there's going to be lots of swearing and tears later okay spot welds by taking out those spot welds you can almost get that piece off already it's literally just caulking holding the bottom half of that in okay what I'm using here is a air chisel with a sheet metal cutting bit but it chops up sheet metal really good If 
I have one complaint is that it's too darn fast. And that's not something you're gonna hear me say often. Okay, it's really difficult with this because it's so bloody quick to get a nice, perfectly straight cut. And that's where maybe using a, a cutoff blade on a grinder might be a better idea for most people, but it'll, uh, it'll cut a panel up pretty quick. Okay, that one's a spot weld cutter. It's got a, it looks like a regular chisel with a curve and it's got a little cutout area where a spot weld would go. And I have yet to meet a spot weld that it can't defeat. You know you're on the right track when you cut off a piece of body metal and water is dripping out where it used to be, collected into all this foam. Like I said, if anything is too fast, I'm trying to feather the feather the trigger there, and I'm still just smashing it. Yeah, a lot of these YouTube videos you see on a cab corner replacements and that. It's like, oh yeah, just do chop, boop, with that. They don't ever show the parts where they screwed up or the piles of rust and the hours of swearing and cursing and dust and dirt and grime. It is a nasty job. I mean, like, you're gonna cut your fingers, you're gonna sweat, you're gonna get dirty. It's not a fun job. Of all the mechanic trades, body man, I mean, you gotta really look. You do. You really have to, to be into it. Because it's it's not something I enjoy. I mean, nothing against body guys. I mean, I, I have the utmost respect for anybody who can stay in this field for long. All these YouTube videos where I see some kid doing this in, a, in his driveway in some subdivision. I can just imagine what his neighbors are saying as their minivan or Audi or whatever just gets blasted with black paint dust and Bondo dust and rust dust and paint over spray. I'm not liking the Swiss cheese I got back here. I think I'm better off just trimming this. At least if I cut it out, I can get in there with a pressure washer and clean it once in a while. Because the way that is now, it's just going to trap mud and dirt. Right? I got nothing back here in the corner to attach to. I just cut it out because it was too rusted. It can drain out. I'd rather it did drain out. I'm not going to put that piece on just yet because I want to get in here. I want to treat this rust that's in the cab floor area itself. There's no holes, but there is surface rust back here. And it's pretty extensive. It goes, it goes all the way up to that seam. The seam itself up here, the flat piece is rusty back of the rocker, the inner steps here, all right, they're rusty. So I want to get in here, cut away whatever is the bad stuff on the rockers, and treat as much of it as I can, the rust preventative, and then I'll get to building it back up. Now i got to figure out what I'm doing with these rockers. This rocker that I bought doesn't include all of what I need. i got a pinhole here, I need to make a little patch on this piece here. As you can see, the bottom of the inner is completely gone. There's nothing to attach the bottom side of the rocker to. Uh, fortunately, the cap mount area is in decent enough shape. So we're going to get in here with a wire wheel, clean up what we can. If you're using a wire wheel on the grinder like this, hand protection is absolutely mandatory. One of the few times I actually care to wear gloves. As you hit your hand with this thing, it will remove skin by the pound. Okay, well I got down to what's, you know, if it didn't come off of that wire wheel, it's not pretty, but I'm gonna take the cutoff saw now that I can see clearly. I'm gonna trim this really badly rotted and jagged edge. Get me a nice straight edge. It's all trimmed up. Uh, all the jagged rust for the most part, there's a few little spots that were up a little higher than I would have liked are trimmed. And no, it is not straight and I don't care about that. You crawl under my truck and 
look at my inner rocker panels and tell me they're not straight, I'll tell you what the hell you're doing under my truck. Okay, there we are, painted up. Nothing fancy, just brushed on. I, if I had an aerosol POR, it would have got up there a little better in some spots, but I did the inside and the outside roughly. I was gonna go into the floors, but then you get to here and then that's rusty in there, so where do you stop, right? It's more to make it last a few more years than anything else. That's all it's about. Okay, well we're gonna get to welding in these cab corners. So my main concern here is when you're putting this thing on, a lot of people will take their doors off for bodywork and then they got to guesstimate at this seam. Well with the door on, I can get my level down and I can get my gap right. So all I really need to do is tack this corner here in this area first. You can see it's just barely hanging on there. But now I got my important part sort of in place. I'm going to open my door and do some on the inside here. Set it into the crevices. And then I'll follow the contour of the body. Like so lightly and be a good layer. Most of this ends up getting sanded off. But you want to maintain that contour. basically trimmed up here we screwed up in one spot got a bit too much and that was a bit of rust here so that's going to be a tricky spot so we'll see how she goes rocker panels are welded in uh, it looks a little bit like Frankenstein's monster right now but uh, that's normal you got to grind down these uh, the spot welds, some of them are a little bit ugly. Now I just use the flux score MIG because it's fast and dirty and it leaves a lot of, well you can see here, the powder. So yeah, it's spot welded all the way up to the driver's door and up to the, uh, the fender part there. And I can't really show you that because I can't open the driver's door because it's up on the lift at the moment. But we have solid rockers again. Okay, she's all welded up now. I'm going to spread some Bondo around here. Up the cab corners you can see, so I was careful there. I'm not going to be careful here. Yeah, that's dirty work. Okay, so I'm going to primer, mask off my line. Uh, I decided for simplicity. I'm just going to follow those stupid little plastic two hogs here. So, there's a bed line down here, but leave this alone. The bottom of these doors is starting to go. Uh, the driver's one, the lift is already gone. The outside looks all right, but the in here, not so much.
not only care if I do get stuff on the door, but why not to be a total schlep about it. In case you're wondering, yes, I will be getting rid of those fender flares at some point. I don't have a watch on, but it's pretty darn late. It's pitch black. It's still raining. Um, I'm going to let this drive for the night. Come out tomorrow, pull the mask and tape off. 